Okay. Okay. Hey. Hey, people. If you are watching this video, let's see, if you're watching this video, I am on location. I'm on location at my friend's house. And we are about four minutes early. Four minutes early for class. And my name's Dr. Donnie. And um, and we're on location. We're on location because, because I've been um, hmm, I've been taking my feelings really seriously. It's a week before school starts. I really need the time to rest. And so I've been really taking the time to rest and hang out with my friend and really prioritize all these feelings and um, watching some TV shows and resting and just rest. Rest was the main theme of last, last week's class. So, so in honor of rest, and since today is about meditation anyway, um, yeah, why don't we, we're going to have a little moment of silence here while people trickle in. So if you're someone who has meditated before or not, just um, enjoy some silence, enjoy whatever comes up, and then we will check back in in about four minutes and see what's up, okay? And if you've never meditated before, well, welcome to it, welcome to it. Just uh, whatever comes up, can you let it go? You don't really have control anyway. Whatever comes up, can you let it go? Okay. 
So one reason why I wanted to just do that is just to show you what it feels like to actually pause for four, five, four, four, four whole minutes. To see just what a, a, a full four minute pause even feels like. You know, um, time is funny. Time, we, we measure it out in all these units, equal measurement, but Time is a lot of, a lot of time is about perception, right? You're having a good time, sometimes time moves faster. You're having a bad time, sometimes it moves slower or vice versa, but, but time can move depending on how we feel, right? So time and silence can, um, well, it's a gift. They say silence is golden and all. But st actually sitting for just four minutes in silence can be agonizing, it can be agonizingly difficult. And then of course, it can be hard to just even get silence, right? Like, I mean, most of us live in a world where silence doesn't really, or um, complete silence, absolute silence, pure silence, I think it was scientifically called, that doesn't really uh, exist anymore unless you're in some, hmm, it probably doesn't exist anymore. It probably doesn't exist anymore. So, so, um, so, so valuing whatever silence you can get is great, and acknowledging that silence is hard. I think it's really important. It's really important. But today, oh, and hello. Um, so. I'm uh I'm on a phone today. I'm I'm on location at my friend's house today. Um, I I didn't I I I didn't quite hear a hello back. I heard some some static. So I just I don't know if, if it's my end or or yours. But whatever technical things we got going on here, just feel free to talk or text. Or I can also. Let's see, here we go. Hello, hello, hello. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, um, I was just saying, oh, I'm at McDonald's, so I'm only texting today. Well, well, if you're at McDonald's, I certainly hope you are enjoying some delicious French fries, because that's what French fries make me happy. <laughs> Had a cheeseburger, <laughs> right on, cheeseburger and fries, right on, right on. That is happy making food. I went to uh, McDonald's for breakfast, so, so right on, right on. I think McDonald's is an important part of anyone's self-care, self-care strategy in the United States. If not the world, you know, cheap, easy to eat, comfort food biscuits, cheeseburgers and fries. It's just wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That dollar menu, I tell you, I tell you. <laughs> okay, so I like to ask this question at the beginning of class always, which is how do you feel? How do you feel today? How do you feel? Do you have any words for your feelings? I'm just gonna make some space. There is a chart with feeling words. Uh, so I've got my I've got my chart in front of me. Um, but you know, there's a world of Google. You can look up a feelings chart if you need it, but the, 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 do your best, just listen to your feelings. And what did I see here? My belly is, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I saw my belly is happy, so I'm happy. Mm. Mm. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Cheeseburger, fries, orange Fanta, $4 for everything. Now see, now you talking, okay? That's the right price. That is the right price for a meal, okay? <laughs> my belly is happy, so I'm happy. My belly is happy, so I'm happy. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I like that happy. And 
belly happy, belly happy. You know what? That just that's worth just sitting with for a second. That's worth just sitting with for a second. You know, we we eat like three times a day, three times a day. We need to keep eating to live. If suddenly we were not able to have a meal, um, you know, that might bring some real unhappiness pretty quickly, pretty quickly. You know, if you think about how much food that is every day, three meals, like if you piled it all, all up in front of you, you need, you need all that to, to, to live. I used to feel guilty buying food for myself. Now I'm doing much better. Mm. Mm. It's funny you should mention that because I had a similar thing too recently where I realized I'll spend all kinds of money on my friends, but, but, but wouldn't do it for myself also. I realized that too myself and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working with that also, you know? I get the right to door dash something if I'm <laughs> really feeling it. I, I, I get the right to spend that money on me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or when I have it, especially, you know. And, and even if I don't have it, I still get the right to feel like I'm worth those things. Because that's what this really comes down to. So, so, so that is the, the real beautiful thing about sitting with these feelings. Because, um, Unless we make space to really sit with what's coming up for us, and we're just going to, you know, eat the food, spend the money, don't spend the money, and then just move on. We'll just move on. We'll just move on. <laughs> and, and just moving on can leave behind a lot of feelings, really leave behind a lot of feelings. Growing up, my mom said to me every day, because of you, we don't have money. Oh, and that, that, that is really the guilt trip of the century. <laughs> That's a lot of guilt. That is a lot of guilt. So you feel really guilty about spending money. Yeah, see, see, exactly. That's, um, what do I mean? Yeah, I mean, what is all that guilt going to get us? Except skipping a lot of a lot of good meals, you know. Yeah. So 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 it's really worth spending time to sit with those feelings. You were four years old when she started saying it to you. Mm. Wow, wow. Hey, you know, yeah, you were four. Yeah, yeah. Let yourself feel that. Oh, let yourself feel that. Hey, I, I had a similar thing. Um, my parents told me at five, I had to pick a career and be good at it and make money. You know, little children, this is that, that's way too much for a little kid to take on. So, so you end up just taking on all the difficult feelings or you take them on, but you can't really manage them well. So it kind of can make you feel like you're going crazy. Or at least that's how I felt when I got told all this at five years old that I had to be big and successful. So yeah, if someone guilts you into that, um, I can sit on your heart. I can sit on your heart. Yeah, you know? So, hmm. so just to make space, not to judge it, not to judge it, because it can be complex, you know? Especially when it comes from your parents who you love, who you want the love from. So not to judge it, just to sit with it. And actually today, today we're going to learn how to sit with it for a little bit, okay? Today's class is actually about meditation. So we're going to, you may have never meditated before, or you may be some expert at it. But one way or the other, I wanted to offer a different way of looking at it. Because, because a lot of people have this idea that meditation is sort of like, when I finally get around to relaxing, that's when I will meditate. And that's cute. That's really cute. That's really cute. <laughs> but it's just not, uh, a real meditation is about actually dealing with the stuff you really feel, right? People get this idea of meditation as happy people sitting on little pillows, just above it all. 
And the truth is that image is the end result of a process of actually working through your real stuff. If you actually work through all your real stuff, you would in the end look pretty peaceful, wouldn't you? But, but it doesn't, the process of getting there doesn't look like that. It looks like, it might look like you looking like a crying mess. <laughs> For your feelings, you may need to look like a crying mess. And if that's what it is, it's what it is. And that's why we're here, because we're gonna learn how to really tap into our actual feelings, really get in touch with that using meditation. And we're gonna do this in slow steps that we can handle so that we can really learn how to heal. Really, 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 for real, for real. Not, not the BS, not the BS, the for real, the for real, for real, okay? And, and actually, you know what? Why don't we just go ahead and start? Let's go ahead and start. And then I'll, I'll read some of this stuff. So uh, if, you're new, if you're here in the class, I'm on location today. So I'm doing my, I'm doing my part. You just take in my words today. And then when I release the, the video of this, you can go and look up the, uh, the workbook. I've got my workbook right here in print form. So you can just listen to my voice today. And I think that's nice. That's all about relaxing. And that's what this is about today. So, so first things first, whatever you are feeling, whatever it is, good, bad, happy, sad, I'm losing my mind, uh, you know, most of last year, I saw a, a, some, some, a, a TV show today that brought up, <laughs> that brought up uh, the coronavirus, George Floyd, a whole bunch of things that happened last year. Didn't bring up Trump yet, but outside of that, it brought up everything else and, um, and uh, it triggered a lot of feelings. Let me tell you, it triggered a lot of feelings. So um, whatever happens with your feelings, just know you have your breath, your breath. Your breath is moving, your breath is happening. You don't have to make it happen. You are breathing whether you, whether you really want to or not. It's just happening. So whatever you are feeling, we can always tap into our breath. Even if there's a million thoughts running around, you can always just notice your breath and see it go in, see it go out. You don't have to open your eyes, close your eyes. You don't have to get into a special position. Whatever happens, just start noticing your breath. You notice your heartbeat. But the breath is nice because the breath, just noticing your breath almost automatically just calms you down. So just notice your breath. Like it's a friend, like it's like a little pet dog, you know. Just notice your breath. Watch it rise and fall. Right there next to you, just notice your breath. And if you're willing, you can slow it down a little bit. Just slow down the in-breath. Maybe just one little second at a time. Even if you're crazy pissed off, all you, you just see the breath. One extra second of pissed off in, one extra second of pissed off out. One extra second of a hot breath in, one extra second of a hot breath out. Just notice your breath. Okay, so this thing we're doing right here, noticing our breath, is called mindfulness. Mindfulness is about examining your quality of life. Now, most of the time, we are caught up in doing things, but we are not human doings. We are human beings. Thus, when we examine our lives with mindfulness, 
we are moving deeper into our state of being in the world. So, you know, I just gave the example of our breath here, but something else might be, let's say our phone. We use our phones to do things like send messages or check email quickly. With mindfulness, we take time to examine the things we do. So we may examine each button we press, each letter we type, the layout of the app. This is about examining the quality of what we are doing, not just the doing of it. Okay, so let's just sit with that for a second. Mindfulness, take in your breath. Take in your mind, take in your mind. Just notice your mind, notice. Notice if you're thinking, notice how you are thinking, what are you thinking about? Notice, notice just what's going on in your brain, your head space. You know, things might be clicking through all the time, but let's take the time to apply some mindfulness. You know, scan the top, scan the bottom. Is it big or small? Whatever you're experiencing. Smooth or rough, all kinds of qualities, mindfulness. In traditional old school meditation, we develop mindfulness by sitting in silence and being with our thoughts. The idea here is that eventually you will learn to treat yourself with compassion and learn to let go. The story of the Buddha is that he was a naive prince who left his palace and saw suffering or stress in the world and vowed to end it. After several failed attempts, he sat underneath a tree and began to sink into his thoughts. And from this, he came to realize that wanting things, desire, is what led to suffering. Now that's true, but today we can expand this to say that number one, the human mind only perceives thoughts, feelings, sensations, and images. I'll repeat these. The human mind only perceives thoughts, feelings, sensations, and images, four things. Two, so thoughts, beliefs, and concepts shape what we think is reality, but is not reality itself, okay? Thoughts, beliefs, and concepts shape what we think is reality, but is not reality itself. If thought is not real, then three, thinking and imagination are the same thing. But the first reduces and represses, while the second expresses and unrepresses. Okay, so that means three, thinking and imagination are the same thing. Thinking and imagination are the same thing. Therefore, four, all stress must come from believing thoughts that don't line up with reality. What happens in life, our, uh, what happens in life is information. Our stressful feelings about it come from our unconscious use of the five frustrations of life, our assumptions and expectations, beliefs and attachments, judgments and comparisons, preferences and requirements, and attempts to manipulate and control things beyond our ego. Okay, so let's just sit with that for a second. That's a lot of information there. You know, out of all the things I just said, I heard thought is not real. Thinking and imagination are the same thing. So just notice all that clicking, clickety clackety going on in your brain. Thinking and imagination are the same thing. All those plans you got going on, 
planning for the future, worried, revisiting the past. All those things I should have said in the argument I had back then. What I'm going to do next time this thing happens to me. Worries about how it's how it's going to happen again. All of it, all of it. It's all it's all imagination. It's all imagination. It's all imagination. You know, um, that argument where I should have said what I wanted to say and uh, and uh, and me 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 imagining when I was five years old and sitting in the park and making shapes in the clouds. It's the exact same thing. Both of those things are thoughts I have about the past. Well, well I guess I, I could say my past. Um, and they're both that, they're both just thoughts. They're both just thoughts. They're both just imagination, imagination. It's just, it's just that when we, when we take it seriously, we call it thinking. When it's attached to something we, 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 we think is serious, we call it thinking. And when it's attached to something fun, we call it imagination. So when I'm making plans, you know, when, when every week I get to my office and I have a list of things that I need to get done, and I'm imagining myself getting it done, that's... Um, that's all imagination. I mean, I guess I know that. I mean, I guess we all know that, right? But when it feels real, it feels hella stressful. Hella stressful. So that's something really to take in. Technically, technically, if everything's our thoughts here, if we're responding to thoughts here, maybe nothing's real or nothing. Hmm. Or we have to believe it to be real to stress out about it. Well, that's um, that is some just some interesting thoughts to think about there, or to not think about, <laughs> or to let go of. Uh, and that brings us to the human brain. The human brain is truly amazing. It has two major sections our frontal lobe, which is responsible for abstract thought, planning, judgment, and our back brain, the limbic system and amygdala, which processes emotions. This part is also more connected to our spinal cord, heart, and stomach, which research also shows have neurons surrounding them that create our deep in the heart feelings and our gut reactions. In fact, our brains have a hundred billion neurons, a hundred billion, making 10,000 connections with each other, doing 50 processes at the same time. Unfortunately, that means the human mind can think 80,000 thoughts a day, or 1.5 thoughts a second. Worse, 98% of those thoughts are just repeated over and over. Even worse, some argue that 80% of those thoughts are negative. 80%. Add to this the fact that only 20% of the brain is conscious, the other 80% is unconscious, and it's clear how our mind can be our worst enemy. Putting a bunch of unconscious negative thoughts on repeat guarantees you will focus on what you lack, blocking your ability to be open-minded, question anything, or develop stillness and mindfulness. In contrast, Buddhism, as well as mindfulness meditation, offers cultivating positive thoughts of gratitude, compassion, and kindness. Genuinely finding the good and especially the good and what we think is bad, shifts our mind into a friend or a space of more support and possibility. Hmm. These days, modern physics, spiritual people and hippies all agree that with the creation of the Big Bang, 
became the creation of consciousness itself. Despite that, many people feel that meditation is boring. Well, it is. When we meditate, we are boring into our inner universe, which is just as vast as the outer universe. So boredom brings us to the kingdom or queendom, if you like. Each person is a total inner universe of things separate from other people. It is our inner world that shapes how we make sense of our outer world. Okay, so to help us with our thoughts and feelings and to greatly expand our consciousness, in this class, we will learn a variety of techniques for developing mindfulness. Okay, so let's test this out. Let's test this out. Um, so, you know, sitting in silence can bring up things for people. So we're not gonna do it long. Well, let's just give ourselves a nice three to four minutes of just taking in your breath. If your mind gets to be too much, focus back on the breath. And to just let go, just let go, okay? Three, three minutes. And you know, if you're in a place where silence is not an option, the idea is to bring inner silence to you and take in whatever sounds are around you. Take them in and let go.
Okay. As you can see, four minutes, four minutes of sitting in silence is not an easy task at all, at all, right? So just giving yourself, you know, although, you know, it's funny because I can remember a time not that long ago where, you know, most of us were capable of sitting in silence for at least, you know, five minutes. And if it's a meditation thing, maybe a 15 minute sit, that kind of thing. But I don't know, I find lately, myself included, everyone, we don't, we don't sit in silence at all anymore. We always have other things going on, a, a phone running in the background, TV running, plans running, just constantly running. So, so I just want to take a moment and just honor the gift of, of uh, silence, the gift of silence. Okay, and if you can practice that gift and apply it to everything going on in your life, like when, when the commute home from work doesn't work out the way you thought it would, or when you're having that next argument with somebody, or uh, when you're mad at yourself, when you're mad at yourself, and you apply this kind of mindfulness. Okay, that's the idea. That's the, that is the idea. Life is rarely ever going to work out the way we want it to. So can we bring can we bring all these inner tools to make peace with life, to make peace with life, whatever it is, you know, whether it's the scene you're taking in at a McDonald's or, you know, you're uh, hanging out at a friend's house. Okay, so before we go on, just want to just check in, let's check, do a feelings check here. Um, make sure we're okay. Uh, going in can bring up all sorts of things. Honestly, just sitting there for four minutes, that was, um, I felt feelings coming up. I certainly felt feelings coming up. So I just want to just take a moment and check in, see if anyone has anything they want to say, address, bring up. Hmm. And that's something that's really worth practicing, even if it's just one minute, a few times a day, pa hitting the pause button, hitting the pause button and just trying to get just a minute of silence can be just transformatory, transformatory. I start to get sleepy when I try to meditate. Yes, yes. Yes, because, because your mind is running all the time. 80,000 thoughts a day. Well, geez, of course your mind would get sleepy. More than likely that means you were sleepy already. <laughs> I mean, we're all sleepy. That's just it. We're all running. We're all, we're all taught to keep running, 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 running. So yeah, we're all really sleepy. I always wonder why we don't even have like, you know, we have like the sleep center, which is about buying mattresses. But why don't people just have like a sleep, like a sleep bar where you can just go in and get like an hour pay, just have like some place to sleep for an hour. They used to have those by the hour hotels, but now that's used for other purposes, I guess. And it probably wouldn't be cheap to just have people sleeping, I guess. I don't know, but it seems like it would really serve a need, you know? Yeah, just places for people to sleep. If you could just pop down to the downtown sleep center and get a couple of hours before you go on with your way. <laughs> that sounds fantastic, doesn't it? <laughs> I'd be so on board with that. I could use that definitely. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think that would serve, that would help a lot of people. Okay, so uh, the second part of the class today is an exercise on telling ourselves the truth. The idea today is you learn to, uh, last week's class was about just drawing, drawing out a feeling, having basic words to, to, to put our feeling into words, you know, just keeping it really simple, basic connections with our feelings. So one step deeper is to just sit with them for a second, which is why we meditated. Right. So the next time you have a feeling, it's, uh, you know, I start to get a little angry. Can I just sit with the anger for a second? Can I just notice my breath? 
while the anger is happening, you know? So that, that's what that's all about, making space to just sit with the feelings, okay? That's that's not easy, especially when we start to get with deal with feelings we don't we really don't like the guilt, the shame that, that we may feel inside. That that can be extremely difficult to sit with. So we're practicing things we can sit with now for the harder things later. Okay. And so if you are just someone who can just sit for five minutes, that that, that means five minutes you can sit with the feeling. You can sit for 10 minutes, you can sit for 10 minutes with the feeling. So we're just building our capacity to do that. Okay, that's so important. And then uh, the next part of this is to experience some feelings and to, to deal with them in an honest way. You know, it's important to be honest with ourselves about our feelings. If we just have feelings and blame someone else for our feelings, that, that may not, may or may not get us so far. So I put together an exercise here for telling ourselves the truth. Okay, so let me let me read this. Obviously, telling the truth is an important part of developing a strong, healthy relationship with ourselves and others. For many of us, however, the truth can either be too uncomfortable or scary to embrace, especially when the truth may force us to alter our sense of reality or identity. We often don't tell the truth when something happens that we can't handle emotionally, such as when we're in danger from trauma or abuse, risk losing something important like money, love, security, when who we actually are isn't good enough to get what we want, or when we are trained by parents, adults, society, or ourselves into denial, rejection, rationalizations and avoidance as coping mechanisms. While we often treat the truth as something stable, permanent and objective like universal truth, most truth is one part what people believe or all agree is accurate and one part how your subjective emotional range is reacting to the information. Our personal truth may be totally different from someone else's or what society says is true. In Buddhism, telling the truth is always balanced against compassion. Saying true things without kindness is cruel. And saying kind things that are not true is lies and can lead to mistrust and hurt. So one way to deal with the difficult feelings around the truth is to explore our emotional range from negative to positive. A full truth involves expressing all of your anger, hurt, fear, understanding, and love. You can use the fingers of your hand as a way to remember this. Find one problem about your life, yourself, or the world that you feel is causing you stress. Start with anger. And for each one, allow yourself to get out all of the thoughts and feelings you are having before you go on to the next one. When you get to understanding, number four, also examine the frustrations of life, our assumptions and expectations, beliefs, judgments, preferences, requirements, and attempts to manipulate and control. If you have trouble with anger, try other words like frustrated or bothered, or try sadness or stress. Remember, you can always choose whether you want to tell someone else the truth because they may or may not want to hear it. But if you lie to yourself, you risk throwing your whole world into confusion and unconscious self-sabotage. Since you don't have all the info you would need to take responsibility and make good decisions, everything you do to address your problems won't work either which can lead to hopelessness, resentment, and deep insecurities. In contrast, the truth gives us a solid, powerful foundation to build a life based on honesty and integrity. Or as they say, the truth will set you free. Okay, so the way this works is anger, hurt, fear, understanding, and love. We pick, a, pick an issue, and then we just start with anger and we get it all out. Then we move on to hurt, then we move on to fear, 
then understanding, and then love. So you can see what a full emotional range is around what's going on for you. A full truth, a full truth, okay? So does, any, so does anyone have a problem? Does anyone want to pick a topic, an issue, something? You know, you said this earlier, you feel guilty. Your parents made you feel guilty about uh, spending money on you. They made you feel guilty. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. So what's your anger? One, anger. What's your anger about this guilt? What makes you angry about it? And you know, I can pick my own guilt here. So uh, I'm angry. I'm angry that I had no choices as a kid. And yet I was put, I, you know, this, this, this blame was put on me. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do about that? That, you know, um, and you, you have to spend this money or that you didn't want kids or that you're, you're stressed out. Like, like, I'm angry that you're blaming me for your decisions. I'm angry you're blaming me for your decisions. Yes, I was very angry about that. What else? What makes you angry? What makes you angry about this? I'm angry that every every like dollar I'm spending, I'm angry that I was made to feel guilty over a dollar, two dollars. Like that was too much to spend on a human being. Anger, 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 anger. I'm angry that I have to sit in these states of constantly being told no. Or con yeah, I'm, I'm angry about constantly being told no. Anger. I'm angry that, that uh, when I say how I feel, I'm not, uh, people don't, people don't, don't respond and with an understanding about what I feel. They just respond with, it costs too much. I say, I'm interested in something. They don't go, oh, that's great. You're interested in that. Tell me why. No, they just go, it costs too much. I'm angry that my interests get reduced to cost all the time. I'm angry that my self-worth is reduced to cost all the time. Angry, angry. Anything else? Anything else? Get your anger out. What makes you angry? What makes you angry about this situation? Yeah, I'm angry that constantly I felt like I wasn't important. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Why did you have me then? Yes. So that moves us right naturally into hurt. Two. Hurt. Hurt. There we go. If I cost you money, duh. Oh, yes. 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 Why did you have me then? I'm hurt. I'm hurt that. Uh, how do I even put that as a hurt? It hurts me so much that, that I feel like, uh, what was my purpose here? I, I'm hurt that I'm hurt that I'm such a disappointment to you. Um, uh, I'm hurt. Hold on. I'm hurt that I'm such a disappointment to you. I'm hurt that that uh, your your. I'm hurt that you see me as such a, a thing to stress out about. Yeah, yeah. I'm hurt that I never asked for anything and I still don't even, I don't get, I get so little. I hurt that I'm, I, it hurts that I'm kind enough not to ask and I still get so little. I'm hurt that my kindness isn't recognized. I'm hurt that I'm the cause of your problems. I'm hurt that you see me as the cause of your problems. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Yeah, I'm hurt that, that asking for what I want 
leads to arguments instead of connection. I'm hurt that you can't see past the money and see the deeper vision. Okay. Just be with it, just be with it. It hurts me when I'm always blamed. Any more hurts? Any more hurt? I'm hurt that it went on for so long. I'm hurt that I still feel this way today. I'm hurt that, you know, they wanted me to succeed, but crippled me. How was I supposed to succeed if, if asking for even the littlest thing can't happen? How am I supposed to succeed? I'm, I'm hurt by these contradictory messages. Yeah. 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 Just be with it, just be with it. Notice your breath if it's too intense. Just be with what you're feeling. Let the hurt drain out. Next is fear. Next is fear. One, two, three, fear. What are our fears here? What's the real fears? What's the real fears? I'm afraid they'll never spend any money on me and I'll never get the things I really want. I'm afraid that if I'm not getting the things I want, a day may come when I won't get the things I need either. That might, that might cost too much, you know? I don't ask for anything. I finally ask for something and I don't get it. Well, I'm afraid of just, you know, one day, what if they say, hey, you don't need food and water either. That costs too much. Kind of felt that way, you know, to be honest with you. It did kind of feel that way sometimes. They never, I never got deprived of food, but it did feel like I was a burden. Yeah, I'm always afraid of being someone's burden. Hey, how about that? Yeah, I'm afraid of being someone's burden. I never want to be someone's burden. Yeah, yeah. Afraid of not being wanted, afraid of not being loved. Yeah, that's the, the other thing I was gonna say. The big fear is, the big fear is not being wanted. Yeah, or not being loved. And they don't really love you. Like it's a, some big cosmic joke or something. They're just putting up with you or, yeah, that you don't really matter in the end. You're not really loved. That's the real fear, that you're not really loved. That's scary. That's 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 scary to even say out loud right now at 39. <laughs> oh, that's the real, that's the big fear. That's the big fear. And the, the big fear is that not being loved will mean no one loves you. You'll be, I'll be all alone. I'll never get my needs met. No one will understand me. No one will support me ever. Those are big fears. Those are big fears. I'll be judged the moment I say my real, 
G giving up my real self in any way will automatically come with fear, fear of being judged, fear of having to defend myself. Me falling down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> falling down the stairs, a fear of falling down the stairs. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, a lot of fears. There's a lot of fear there. A lot of fear. And even a fear of falling down the stairs is just really a fear of not getting support. You know, a lot of us grew up in situations where we just didn't get support. So a danger would equal no one was there for us. No one was there for us. You know, in a, in a, in a place where you got support, you would have fallen down the stairs and it would have been maybe something you didn't want to happen, but hey, there's someone there to pick you up or someone there to call the hospital or someone to take you to the hospital and someone to nurse you back to health. Someone to say loving things to you as you are in pain. But minus those things, not minus those things, even the tiniest fear can, can be outright terror because without that support, that support is so important, especially when you're a little kid. So big fears, meaningful fear, meaningful fear there. Just make space for that fear. Just give ourselves a minute there now. Just be with that. The human mind can hold on to those fears long, long after the situation is over. So let's just be kind to what we're feeling. Can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. Okay. Well, if things get intense, things start getting intense, just know at any moment you can always focus on your breath. We are, it's we are imagining into our feelings, tapping into what we feel. So if things ever get too intense, back to the breath. You don't ever have to dig into a feeling. You just have to focus on the breath. If anything ever feels too much, just focus on the breath. The breath's happening whether you are happy or sad. The human mind can always think I can't do it. This is too much. And that's okay. Honor what you feel. Honor what you feel. Honor what you feel. And just focus on the breath. Learning tools. We are learning tools today, so that way when <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and uh, when the real heavy moments of life happen, we can handle them. Okay. Okay. So, so that's that's the idea is when the real heavy moments of life happen, we can handle them. So um, whatever you're feeling, honor your feelings. And if it ever gets to be too much, go back to the breath. Okay. Pick one thing at a time, one thing you can handle. So we're on fear here. Let's keep going. Understanding. 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 Oh, sure, sure. Uh, understanding. What understanding have you developed exploring this feeling of guilt? So some, 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 some understandings there was, it's really intense. This feeling's really intense. 
Uh, one understanding can be, but one understanding is they cut real deep. Another understanding is, hmm. well, you know, uh, what assumptions and expectations are we making about this feeling? Well, uh, hmm. Hmm. One, one assumption I often make is guilt. I don't like it, but when I tap into it, it hurts. It really does hurt. It really does hurt. And I need, need to be sensitive to myself. Understand. Yo. Yeah. Compassionate for these feelings, because these feelings are really that, um, they're really that hard. Also, when I sit with this, I would say, all these feelings that were put on me by my parents, that was my parents' stuff. That's one thing I, I definitely feel as I sit with all of this is I felt the burden, but I mean, I felt the burden because I was taking on what I was being taught. <laughs> so, so that's why I think it's really important. I could just be kind to myself as I process what's coming up for me. <laughs> Uh, yes, but well, that was fantastic. <laughs> yes, exactly. It was fantastic, man. Uh, I, I highly recommend getting at the feelings you're having. Um, punching things. We have a whole section dealing with trauma. We have a whole section on dealing with trauma that we're going to do as well. So I really wanna, really wanna encourage everyone to give that a shot, working at your feelings. Okay. And that being said, <laughs> let's try to get through this today. I'm seeing a lot of, that's some, that's some crazy activity here. Yeah, any other beliefs? I mean, let out your feelings by all means. Please let out your feelings. Although I should say, let them out in an appropriate way. And any under understanding that you're developing from this is, is worth it for sure. Whatever understandings are coming up for you. Hmm. Okay, well, and then finally, the hardest thing of all is love is love, is love, love. What about the situation? And that's gonna be really hard after processing some of the things we might've just processed here, but what is something we can say about all of this, which was not easy. What is something about this we can say we love? What is something about this we can all say we love? Well, I love that you never know how your feelings are gonna go. I love that, um, I love that we are learning how to take care of ourselves by digging into our actual experiences. I love that we're learning how to deal with our anger, hurt, and fear. Hello there. Hello. I love that we're learning how to deal with our anger, hurt, and fear. Hello there. So I'm gonna ask you all just to kind of chill, just to hang back as we process things. And we'll uh, close today's class. Um, you know, I, I, I can't, thank you. 
I can't say of what's going on is uh, I can't say what's going on here, but I'd like to ask just round off today's class if you don't mind. So uh, love. <laughs> Just, let's just, I'm gonna click some buttons here. Okay. Well, I, I love that this is an opportunity to get in touch with all the feelings that are coming up for all of us. It's an opportunity to, to make peace with a lot of things. Um, getting in touch with the guilt you feel as a kid is hard. So it's hard to really find something about that you love. So it can be worth it just to sit just to sit with that and see if you can find uh, some 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 benefits there. I hate to say this, but maybe it's even worth it that you know you learned how to get on in society. That's what we get. That's what, that's what we learn from guilt and shame is how to adjust, how to how to negotiate and live in a society, even if those lessons are painful. And uh, you know, if if the, the the previous people who were in here are, you know, use this space to spam the place up, that's a great opportunity also for me to get in touch with my own feelings. It's actually the first time that's ever happened. Um, now, it's because we worked on this thing with guilt, I I uh, I I don't I just feel like. Mm, There's a space open inside of me that just cannot move into reaction. I feel like there's a space inside of me that's just willing to receive and accept and um, and uh, I, I don't know how to put this in the words exactly, but a calmer state of mind, inner state of mind that 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 if I can be kind to myself as I deal with these feelings of guilt, I can be kind to myself as I deal with anything else in life. And that is the idea behind all this meditation, is to take whatever comes up and can I deal with it, okay? Okay, so on that note, please practice. Please practice. Nothing is a one and done. So please uh, take the time to try these exercises out and get in touch with your feelings. Next week, We'll take it a little deeper by having a more extended meditation. So hopefully, hopefully you, we can uh, do that in some, in some silence. But hey, but you know what? If not, <laughs> then, then we will do it with whatever comes up. And if people come up and do those things, it'll be an opportunity to enjoy, to enjoy that contribution as well, well as we get in touch with our feelings. The whole idea is to really get in touch with your feelings, OK? That's the whole idea here, OK? So I hope you got a good chance to do today. Okay, everyone. So until next week, if you need me for anything, shoot me an email. This is Dr. Donnie. Uh, if you have problems with your feelings, feel free to come to class and work on them. Okay, until then, good luck with your thoughts and feelings and uh, have a nice week. Okay. <laughs> what a day. All right, bye, everyone. <laughs>